in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern taking a look at continued colder temperatures there is some hope for like the midway point of the month i would say into the late portion for at least periodic warm-ups if not maybe even a warmer pattern settling in we've seen the models trend at that but we still have to deal with the next week to two weeks of these very very abnormally cold temperatures i mean it is just unbelievable i've been seeing you guys this comments on our recent videos talking about you know 40s and i think i saw one in buffalo new york somebody said 40s in maryland during the day i mean that is just unbelievable for the final day of may might as well be the first day of june like today and the overnight lows for a lot of people were lower 40s or 30s i mean this is just incredibly cold temperatures for this time of year uh, and, you know, I'm not a fan of it. A lot of people get this mis misconception that I'm like cheering for these cold temperatures here. Uh, I love going to the beach. I live in Southeast Virginia. Like I am ready for uh, beach weather and this is certainly not it. So uh, definitely not cheering for this and I can't wait for the end. That's why I'm always kind of looking for that end date of these cold temperatures for you guys. That's kind of where my bias lies is I want this warm up to move in and the cold air to move out. I don't know about you guys. Let me know. What you guys are hoping for in the comments but severe weather is expected to be on the rise with all of this back and forth and more cold air than normal you know more troughs that leads to more instability more variance in the temperatures but also more shear with these troughs that are moving in than what's typical um so certainly a more opportunities for severe weather i would say than a typical june is what i'm anticipating we had hail here in southeast virginia actually yesterday uh, the most hail I've ever seen here. It wasn't anything huge. It was probably a quarter inch uh, at max, but it was just so much of it. It was accumulating all over the roads and my car. I was so worried about that, but we've had some pretty crazy weather. Um, but yeah, let's just dive into things. Take a look at these cold temperatures. Uh, so again, the, the first frame here as of this morning on June 1st, I can't believe it's June. Uh, we see these warmer temperatures set up and it's not perfectly vertical along that western coast like you would typically expect in a positive pna but it's still affecting us like a positive pna would uh but we have noted that around the fourth through seventh time frame there will be a warm-up we've been talking about that for probably about a week already so we see the cooler temperatures are over the east right now you can just step outside and know that i don't have to tell you uh, but we could see by Monday the 2nd, something interesting is happening. Some more cold temperatures are working their way into this western area, giving us a little bit more of a brief negative PNA look. And all of this warmth is kind of just on the move eastward. So again, we're going to have a couple of days here that are going to be a lot nicer than things have been. Uh, as we move towards Tuesday the 3rd, already warming up in the east. But this is why it's going to be so brief. Uh, and this is kind of how we know that is look at this warm air rebounding so quickly along the west and this sends the cold air doing the same thing where it's chasing this warm air in we call this a very progressive pattern where things are moving from west to east in a hurry so the warm air that's heading from west to east is moving quickly it's not a slow mover or stagnant area of warmth this is gonna move in and it's gonna move out and same with this cold so let's take a look at what happens by the fourth is that cold cold air is now over the central states the west is clearly warm the east is clearly warm by wednesday the fourth like we've been talking about thursday the fifth it's still warm friday the sixth the cold air is working its way into the eastern states a little bit as this warm air mass continues to solidify itself out west and then by Saturday the 7th, certainly the coldest area would have to be this, maybe the plains into a lot of the eastern states. Uh, and then as you can see, uh, we get this next Arctic blast. Look at how it blasts down. Look at where it originates from. Way up there in northern Canada and actually further north than you can even see on screen. And we're just going to see it move down. It's going to blast down this Arctic air mass. So let's see what happens. Here's the 8th, Sunday. Monday the 9th. Tuesday the 10th, look at that, right back to something similar to what we've been seeing, warm air here over the west, positive PNA is what we call that, and this is forcing this Arctic air to free flow right into the central and eastern states. You might note that the winter was very, very cold here in the central and eastern states compared to normal, and certainly compared to our last like five or six winters, we had a very similar pattern to this over the course of the winter, so 
kind of gives you an idea of uh, the, the variance from normal that we are experiencing here. And that cold air lasts multiple days. Here's the 13th where things look to be warming a little bit. Again, the midway point of the month is still up for debate and could be our uh, way out of this. We do see a negative PNA look sort of setting up. There is still some warmer areas here in the southwest, but it is looking more and more negative. And we do see things warming in the east. Here is Saturday the 14th looking much better. 15th, 16th. But keep in mind, all of these days are like, 13, 14, 15 days out. So there is a little bit of uncertainty on the models, but it does look a little bit more optimistic than what we've seen previously. Just wanted to give you guys that piece of news there from what I'm seeing this morning. Looking at the storminess, we are a little dry today. Uh, there is some overnight thunderstorms expected throughout some of these like Tennessee, North Carolina area. We do expect the low to originate here out of the central Rockies. So we're going to be waiting for that here over the coming days. Let's look at Monday the 2nd as we move towards Tuesday the 3rd. Look at what transpires. Everything that was over the Rockies is becoming this line of thunderstorms. And we're going to look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook at the end of this video, but there's a very linear area of severe weather risk that we're going to be anticipating for this time frame on Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. We'll take a look in a minute. As we take a look at Wednesday, we see it moving eastward, that line of thunderstorms here. So we're seeing this pocket still very, very linear. We do see this area of tropical moisture kind of coming from Central America up into the deep southeast. So some thunderstorms might be experienced in there with that. And then also we continue to have storminess over the Rockies, which might push out more lows after this point. So we'll have to wait and see with that. Here's Thursday the 5th. Again, areas to watch are very similar plains through the Midwest and then that deep Southeast region. We're staying kind of in the same idea here. Friday the 6th, everything is moving eastward. A lot of different areas probably seeing some thunderstorm chances by this point. Uh, Saturday on the 7th is going to be your East Coast day where we're looking at the East Coast seeing a threat. And then by Sunday, uh, we get some more low pressure here. One up way up in uh, Canada, one weaker one down here in Minnesota. Either way, it's enough to cause uh, quite a few pockets of thunderstorms across, especially the central states, but some of the eastern states as well. Moving towards Monday on the 9th, we see that a lot of this is getting more organized. Now over the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, lower Midwest, deep south and southeast there. These are some of the areas we're seeing by Monday the 9th. And then by Tuesday the 10th, we see this reaching the southeast and mid-Atlantic and even Ohio Valley with some thunderstorm activity. Again, Tuesday the 10th, right around the 10-day mark. So after this point is when we start to take things with a grain of salt when, you know, the models can vary a lot in what they're calling for. Very, very clearly still a ridge in the west, trough in the east if we follow these red lines. So we could tell it's a little cooler in the east still by this 11th time frame. Let's keep this going. I want to take us towards Thursday on the 12th, and we get another stronger low up there in Canada, another more linear severe weather risk. So again, the activity in the severe weather department is just more than normal. I want to watch this because by the 13th, we have a 997 there over western South Dakota. We'll have to see if that can bring uh, a more cold front type impact. And it's not, it's kind of messy. It's kind of messy. Uh, let me get us to the high temperatures, but we definitely see some thunderstorms around for again many different pockets here as we're reaching the midway point of the month and even by the 16th year very very similar impacts so the activity in the thunderstorm and severe weather department is going to be on the rise here and really be active for the most part and then that cold air we'll have to see as we approach the 15th if maybe that's going to finally break up i'm definitely having my fingers crossed but again let me know in the comments what you're cheering for Total precipitation has taken a shift a little bit to the north, where we're seeing kind of the central plains here through parts of the Midwest into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. That's your highlight area. Also, the deep south kind of picking up uh, by deep south. I guess it's, a, you know, southern Florida uh, or really Florida in general, southern Georgia, southern South Carolina, that area. And it's no surprise. We saw a lot of thunderstorms linear wise in here. And then we saw a lot of that tropical moisture for the deep southeast, so it makes sense. Looking at the anomalies, those are some of the most above average areas that we see. But when we look east of the Rockies, most areas are at least close to average. The light browns are very, very close to your normal. 
probably won't even notice it's below average precipitation in these areas but the blues are very very far above average we're talking two three four even five inches of rainfall above what is average for only a 15 day period so that is absolutely torrential for some of these areas over the next two weeks looking at the storm prediction center outlooks here's for day one sunday on june 1st we have four uh, five general or no better yet five marginal risk areas three general thunderstorm risk areas and a slight risk so i'll break down the, the categories the lighter green there is your general thunderstorm risk and as the name suggests we expect general thunderstorms in there but anything is possible so heat every watch warning and advisory the five marginal risk areas is where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible and then your slight risk area there over texas that is where we expect a little bit more scattered about severe weather again yesterday here in southeast virginia we had severe hail uh we only had a marginal risk only at a marginal risk of severe weather so level one so that is a great lesson that these categories while they do increase your chances of seeing severe weather technically uh the lower risk does not rule it out i don't know why that would ever rule it out in your head but to most people you know they see the level one out of five and it's like okay i don't gotta worry about this but sometimes you do uh yesterday for that i think my sister cracked her windshield yesterday so yeah, you, you do have to worry about it a little bit and pay attention at least. Uh, day two here uh, looks almost identical, uh, and that's because I guess the website's having an error. So that's for Sunday too. Uh, this one's for Tuesday. So I guess we're just skipping Monday today. Uh, but tomorrow we'll see it on the day one risk, so rest assured. But huge general thunderstorm risk. And this is that linear severe weather risk from Texas all the way up through the Great Lakes. We have a marginal risk, and we have a slight risk from Texas to Wisconsin very linear like i mentioned so uh we'll have to see if there's any increases here uh definitely looks interesting and this is going to be our next kind of severe weather event uh as a whole so we're going to be watching this very very closely and with all that being said we upload every single day so be sure to subscribe you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video